My name's John Scott and I look after the finances at the Australian Brandenburg Orchestra. The opera begins with the trumpet fanfare and the introduction of the character, La Musica. La Musica represents the spirit of music and sets the scene for the drama that follows. She tells of a man called Orfeo who seems so beautiful that it could tame the animals and enchant the gods. <laughs> I'm Joanna Tondis and I'm the Artistic Director's Assistant and I've been working on Orfeo as a keyboard tuner, tuning both harpsichords, regal and organ. And I've been a surtitle operator as well, as a librarian and orchestral management help. The story begins with the wedding of Orfeo and Eurydice. They are joined by shepherds and nymphs who share in their celebrations. In this act, you will hear madrigals, trios, dances, and instrumental interludes, all used by Monteverdi to evoke a joyful atmosphere. Hi, um, I'm Joshua Kim, I'm the philanthropy manager. In Act Two, the celebratory mood is disrupted by the arrival of a messenger with news that Eurydice has been bitten by a snake and has died. Orfeo is wracked with grief and rage. Listen up for the change in music, no longer rhythmic and tuneful, it is now harsh and jarring. Orfeo decides to go to the underworld and rescue his love. If he's unable to, he resolves to remain in the underworld rather than live in the world without her. I'm Susan Duffy, Executive Assistant to the General Manager. In Act 3, Orfeo and his companion Hope arrive at the entrance to the underworld. An atmosphere of despair is created by a unique instrument called the regal. From here, Orfeo must journey alone, but first must convince Caronte the ferryman to allow him to cross the sacred river to the dead. An orchestral sinfonia is repeated, representing divine intervention. This lulls Caronte to sleep and Orfeo is able to cross the river into the underworld. Hi, I'm Kevin Madeira, Business Systems Manager with the Australian Brandenburg Orchestra. In Act 4, Orfeo's beautiful singing moves Proserpina, Queen of the Underworld. She pleads with her husband, Plutone, to release Eurydice. Plutone agrees, only on the condition that Orfeo does not look back at his bride as they leave the underworld. Orfeo's anxiety is reflected in the disjointed music as he begins to doubt that the gods will really let Eurydice leave the underworld. Eventually, his anxiety overcomes him and he looks back. Eurydice is torn away from him to stay forever among the dead. Orfeo is forced to return to the world alone. I'm Renee Jones, Marketing Executive at the Australian Brandenburg Orchestra. In Act 5, Orfeo mourns for his lost bride. Suddenly, Apollo, god of music and the sun, appears to take Orfeo to heaven, where he will forever see Eurydice's image in the sun and the stars. Orfeo and Apollo sing a duet, their close vocal lines representing the true harmony found only in heaven. The opera closes with shepherds and nymphs singing and dancing once more. <laughs>